guys welcome back to the channel check it out this beautiful client of mine she's a regular i do her here like all the time this is her first time doing goddess locks and i mean i feel like this is her look body these they look so good and so natural on her this doesn't give it justice to be honest it just doesn't so anyway she's fly she's killing it um I'll show you how I cheat these. I was filming this on my Instagram live. So I'm just going to like kind of fast forward through the footage. And in this way you don't. I'm not speeding anything up. You can see how I move in real time. So you know. The funny thing about this is that like 90% of the time. She was sleeping. And this is a client is what I like to call a sleeper. Because she sleeps all the time. And I know that she works really hard. Really long hours. She usually comes straight here after work so she works nights and she'll do like a 9 a.m or 8 a.m session straight off of her shift so she tired and like she'll just sleep and i'm like oh i don't mind i just get get it done because for one she's not an annoying sleeper and like we joked about this when i was finished like she sleeps with her chin in her chest the nigga who be sleeping and they be bouncing their head all the way back like huh, huh? waking up like waking himself up with the jerking of their neck those are the annoying ones so i could work with this sleeping in with your chin in your chest is like eh, i could work with it also my chair reclines so i find that's like helpful to my clients if you are a hairstylist or a home hairstylist i suggest that you get a chair that reclines also because when you have taller clients it's just easier to get to the top of their head like without struggling without getting up on your tiptoes and then like make sure your chair goes up and down because you will break your back trying to lean over to do somebody's hair for three four hours you know what i mean that can be compromising to your posture so i make sure my client can move up and down that way it doesn't disrupt my posture i'm not trying to look like an old fucking wizard because or which because my client you know to appease my client we could just find a common neutral ground so at this point i'm just going around and i'm putting in the twist so I'm adding twists all the way around her hair at the part. Look at my hair. Ooh, Chile. Well, at the part so that I want to be blonde, I'm adding the silver twist. Look, I'm having a great time. She's sleeping. She, at this point, she's knocked out. You can tell. Look, it's like we getting her Bernie's. But I don't care. Don't bother me. I'm looking at another live to see what the people are talking about. They ain't saying shit. Cool. So now I'm twisting her hair. The little bubble that you see coming up is because I'm um, screen capturing this from my phone. And I get alerts every time somebody visits my website and stuff like that. It's the only alert I allow on my phone because this should be annoying. So, yeah, I'm just going around and I'm working around her. Yeah, she's sleeping. Yeah, her chin is down. But instead of, like, waking her up, I'm just, like, working around it. Because what if I was working with, like, Beyonce or I always say Beyonce. <laughs> I wish. Or a celebrity. Like, when you, you make certain accommodations for celebrities, and I feel like you should do that for your regular everyday client as well. Because fuck them celebrities one you might never get to work with them and that's why you're so thirsty and eager to please them and of course they pay, pay you more but at the same time these women are celebrities in their own right like you are a superstar to me so yeah i work around you like you p diddy like i don't care if you want to be on your computer do yeah i'm gonna I'm figure it out so i like to mix the hair like if i'm doing a, she wanted a couple blonde highlights so even though i so a couple strands of her hair will be blonde but in some other areas, I mix the blonde and black hair together for the ends just so it looks like more cohesive instead of just like one blonde strand, another blonde strand. If some of the hairs on the um, loose ends have a little blonde in it, it looks so pretty. And that's something that I just discovered on my own. And I've just been doing that. I really like it. I really like it. So if you see me do colors, even if you get like one or two highlight, here and there I'll add a little, like I mean a little hints of blonde or hunts of that highlight color into your main color to make it look better. Like, I don't think you noticed. You might have to go back to the beginning and look at the footage from the, the the photos because then you'll see like the little hints of blonde on the ends. So some of the blonde ones, I do a little hints of black in it. And some of the black ones, I do a little hints of blonde in it. Anyway, so I'm just going all the way around her scalp, her hair. And so, um, yeah, added this hair onto the ends of the twist y'all know how i do it if you've seen my videos this is pretty much my method there are other ways to do this and i have done those but i've been doing this so long like i always have to find new ways to do things one to keep myself interested and two to like create a faster more efficient process 
Like, you have to grow. Like, you have to do new things and try other things. So before, I used to just twist the hair all the way down. But now, and and, twi- and maybe add the hair while I'm twisting down. But I find that it's easier. It's more like of an assembly line when I do one thing at a time. And if it's my, my personality type, like, I'm a type A person. So I need to do one thing, knock that out. Do this next thing, knock that out. And that's how I like to work. And I like to work in sections. So right now, I'm sectioning her hair. Because I have added all the twists. And I've added the hair to extensions to the ends. I use two different hairs for that. If you would like to know what hair I use, you know, comment below. So I'll just fast forward it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put um, the hair that I used to wrap. I'm going to put that in. I got it in a big bag. I, I usually take my hair out of the packaging and put it into like huge bags. Just so that it's easy for me to grab it and store it. I don't want a million packages. Like, I'm not a fucking beauty supply. So, I like everything in, like, one or two big bags. And then I keep them in big bins. And I make sure to keep the silica packs in there so that they stay fresh. And then sometimes I just leave the top over the bins so that they can air out. And they don't, you know, I don't want them in there getting funky. But I run through the hair so fast because I have so many clients. No braggies. That is just easier for me to do it like that. And buy hair in bulk. So now I'm separating the pieces that I will need, and I am using her head for a shelf. Sometimes I use my client's shoulders for shelves. Sometimes I use their head because she's sleeping. Shit, she ain't going to move. And also my clients, for the most part, they don't be moving. They just be right there. It's perfect. And I like to keep stuff in close proximity. I don't want to keep reaching over to the table, when it, and I can just grab it off the top of your head. You feel me? So at this point, I'm going through, and I'm pulling the crochet hair. I'm crocheting the hair through. That's the method I like to use to guarantee that my locks will not slip. That's what I do, baby. We're not trying to have no complaints. So this is make sure my locks can, won't slip and that my client can wash them, get them wet, everything. So I'm just going through and I'm pulling these hairs through each strand, each twist. Or like I like to call them the skeletons. And once I finish like a whole section, I start rapping. And you know me, I rap in one direction first, and then I rap in the other direction. And it looks like it's pulling, but it's really not. I mean, it's so gentle. I do not rap tight, I do not braid tight, I do not twist tight. I don't. Mm-mm. I get my point. It's like people who yell. I think braiding too tight or twisting too tight is like for people who like to yell. It's like you don't have to yell, you can get your point across in a nice audible tone without bursting anybody's eardrums or in this case hair follicles from the scalp okay so you know i get my point across without having to like squeeze your brain right now it's not necessary i clip off the excess hair and then i seal it simple as that we're going for a mid-back length so you know i usually stop the lock like right about where the shoulder blades I don't know what that's called, scapula, where that little cuff is in the, in the, where the shoulder blades <laughs> are. So I get the most stress when I get my massages. Oh, I'll be like, hit it right there, thank you. So that the, the curly part can fall to like the mid to low back. And you see like in this one, there's a little bit of gold hair in it. That's right, baby. And keep that hair out of my way. And so I wrap, you know, pull through, just make sure it's flexible and loose. Now wrap it over in one direction. All right, a good amount, push it up. Then I wrap it back over in the direction that I will be wrapping for the length of the lock. And I choose to use the side that I'm str- the I'm strongest and fastest wrapping with my right hand. So I wrap right over left. I can wrap left over right, but I'm faster with my right over left. And I find that I get two different textures. So sometimes if I want like a really kinky, fluffy texture, I wrap with my left. It's just weird. I don't know. I just I just learned to do it that way. See? And I wrap it. In the back, I want it just to the end of this hair. And basically, you see right there where her shoulder blade is in the back? That's where I end the lock when I'm doing a mid-back install. And I let the loose wavy hair fall. I'm going to seal it, trim that little piece of hair. If I really wanted to, I could save a little piece of that and make a knot. But eh, only time I'm making knots is if I don't have any glue. Because glue is just life. It is. It is. 
And don't tell me nothing about, oh, glue is toxic. Bitch, you got glue on your nails. Shut up. Cut it out. You got it on your nails. Okay? And also, I, I buy a glue that states non-toxic. And I'm not, you're not ingesting it. So, boom, get a little bit of flavor added, that little gold touch to the lock. It'll all make sense in a minute. You might see a little more hints throughout, and that's the whole point. Ah, it looks so good. Right now, everything looks a little poofy and out of sorts, but once it's all together at the end, that's why I hate, sometimes I hate having a mirror in front of my clients because, one, they get distracted. They want to keep looking at themselves. Or they start feeding into their insecurities. They have doubts about me. I'm like, girl, relax. We just started. Like, this is a process. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to stop your makeup artist in the middle of her contouring. No, you got to finish. You got to see the end result. It's a lot of different steps to this. So sometimes people panic. It's cool. I'm trained to handle the panicking ass women. And look at me. Look at the flick of the wrist. Look at the flick of the wrist. See, I'm on, I'm on lock three, so I'm in my zone. She's my first client for the day. I have one more client after her, but she was the first client for the day. I'm going to add a second piece. I just flip it over the first. Boom. And I hold both sides of that together. And then I wrap over them with the tail that I was wrapping with the, the initial first piece. Until that piece is no more. I mean, so thin that it's like a whisper. And then I go ahead and grab the longer piece that I just added. Because now we're getting higher up her neck. I mean, her scalp, her hairline, away from her hairline. So I'm going to need more hair to get to the same length. And also, I like to stagger my locks. I don't like one uniform length. They need to look a little bit like, eh. So, yep, I wrap all the way down so I feel content. Trim away that excess. And boom, wrap back up. It's sometimes up and down, depending on how long the piece is that I have left. And then seal with some glue. And if you want to know what type of glue I use, all you need to do is let me know below. And drop some butterflies in the comments. When y'all drop butterflies in the comments, I get excited. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then I go and I find your page and I send you some love as well. If you don't post videos, that's okay. I'll still subscribe to your channel and we can be friends. So that's it. That's how it's done, sis. You see that? That's how it's done. This is how it's done. Now, moving on. If you haven't checked out the Hair Story podcast, go ahead and wherever you listen to your podcast, go check out NYC Butterfly Braids Hair Story podcast. So you can listen to my clients share their hair stories. Wow, I'm really going to wrap that the wrong way. I'm looking back now. I'm like, oh, you wrapped the wrong way. But now you can see how I wrap from left to right. Oh, wait. <laughs> I fast forward. My bad. I'm on, um, I'm using, I told you, this is Instagram Live. So, look, I wrote a little caption for the people that came to see. And it says, my client is sleeping. All right, so, you know, this is pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to it. What I'm going to do now I'm going to go ahead and let you guys listen to a clip of the Hair Story podcast. It's one of my random episodes. And um, I'll be back with some, I guess that's it. Mom, I don't even know why would, I, why would I come back. That's it. Just check out the Hair Story podcast. You see what's going on here. Most of the time I think y'all watch with the sound off like it's porn on. But real quick before I do that, I'm just going to show you how I do a color and for color, it's important not to have any gapping because you don't want to expose that twist. So clearly, I twisted her hair down. There's ways to twist in which um, you don't see any color. Like, you can tuck the person's hair. But when they're doing smaller twists like this, it's a lot harder. It's easier with larger twists. So I wrap down in one direction to conceal the hair as well as I can, as low as I can. And then I start to wrap. I make sure the hair is really wide. And I'm definitely overlapping. And I put special attention on the root. So it looks really seamless. Especially since it doesn't match the color of her hair surrounding 
the lock. I want it to look like, you know, like real dread. And if you're looking at these locks, look at them, girl. They coming together. Pretty. So then I do that, and I get down to a piece where I need to add. And I go ahead and I add another piece. Folding it right over, holding them both pieces together, and wrapping with that original piece until there's no more. Once I've done that, seal it really tightly with the last strands, and then I wrap over that to secure it. And boom. You won't see any colors poking out, honey. None of it. None of it. All right. Now, as promised, here's a clip from the Hair Story Podcast. Just a little bit. Not too much. Enjoy. They got to be honest. It is a big thing there. They are so biased to people who have a lighter skin versus who, mind you, we're all black and we're all right, Jamaican, right. but they, they do have preferences in every situation they do. And it's sad, but it is big in Jamaica. I don't know about here. I feel like it's here too, because people love to, oh, I'm team light skin, I'm team dark skin, whatever. So I feel like it's just everywhere, but especially in Jamaica, like a lot of people feel the need to bleach their skin or, and you know, do even guys, guys make women feel like that. So it's like they make them feel unattractive for when they're darker versus when somebody's lighter. And then they'll applaud people who bleach their skin. So it's like they make people want to do it. Yeah. And it's sad, but it's a big thing there. So like you, they're do so you believe in light skin privilege that lighter skin people have. They do. More I believe skin. they 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 do get certain preference versus a darker skin tone person. I believe that. Can you give me an example how that might affect you in your real life? Um. Or maybe not you or just observe. I feel like I've never. I feel like personally you haven't. No, I feel like I've experienced racism, but I don't recall experiencing colorism. Cool, but you still acknowledge it. Sometimes people who never like, like oh, racism is real. I never did it, but it still exists just because you never had that experience. But it's so it. funny because me and my friend, right, she's Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we both went to the school in the city. It's a white college, pretty much. So we went there to apply for their respiratory program, I believe. So anyways, we were like the only black people I've seen that day. I'm not saying black people don't go there, but we were the only ones I seen that day. So we were there and we both did an interview. So the person, which was the financial aid rep, he was saying, um, are you sure you're interested in this program because it's really expensive and you know, you know what? Like he was pretty much discouraging me talking down to me he's like oh it's like you know you see a benz but you know you can never afford it but you still want it yeah those were the comparison he was giving us and he was like are you sure you don't want to try for something less um expensive like to be a nurse's aide or mm -hmm. i'm like seriously i've never and he was like um even a question that he asked me, he, he asked my friend, like, if her father is still in our lives, and he's like, how much kids do you have? Why you assume that I have kids? Why you going ask me if I have, why you going to say how much kids I have? And when I came out, she was like, yeah, he asked her the same question. And mind you, I'm black, and she's Spanish, so she's more light-skinned than me. Mm -hmm. And he treated us the same way. He was just white, period. He never cared if she was light-skinned and I was dark-skinned. He both try to discourage us from applying to the program. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we both experienced that kind of um, treatment, and it didn't matter she that were. she was light and I was dark. So most people love to, oh, light-skinned, dark-skinned, in the white person's eye. You still black. Right, and I don't you feel mean. like most people understand Ooh. that. But... I was so, no. Ever since that day, I never even checked for that school. I should have went on their website and wrote a review because mm. that was very... You should have got a damn lawyer. I should have. But 
I say that to say he treated us the same way. And mind you, she's more light skinned than me, so it didn't matter to him. You know, we were both black to him, right? But people or or people they don't see that. They feel like once you light skin, like you on a certain type of pedestal, or you you get different special type of treatment, and which is true. But in the eyes of the white person, they don't care. Like we're He's all black. Like, Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they need to get understand that part. No, that's a great point that you bring up. But that's that, a great point. What do you feel about um? Cause this is what I feel. I feel like um, I never heard somebody break it down from that perspective so well. But I think about it like, you know, say you watching like a TV show or something. That's it. It could be two dark skin parents. They always got like one Puerto Rican looking daughter. Like, what do you think this girl came from? <laughs> I can't be no dark skin girl. That's why I used to love Family Matters. You know what I mean? Even though they had Richie, like, where the fuck he came from? Like, but they, you know, okay. Right. Sometimes we do be mixed up. Well, the Cosby shows, like, y'all niggas are dark skinned people. These niggas got fucking Puerto Rican looking ass kids. I'm like, I love, I'm half Puerto Rican too. So, Jake and Puerto Rican. A lot of people don't know that. That's fine. Huh. But Puerto Ricans, because that's why, because I'm dark skinned. <laughs> so, Puerto Ricans have, like, a lot of colorism too. Every Spanish speaking country, pretty much every country, they, they have dark skinned and light skinned people in every country. Right? You already never see. They always show, like, one face of a country. Like, you think Puerto Rican, you think, oh, a little Spanish. Oh, right, just person. like Jamaica. There's just a like lot Jamaica, of... Just like Haiti. Just right. like fucking every fucking way. Even fucking Italians come dark skin. Like, okay? Mm-hmm. So, they'll have, um... Yeah, they have a, con- a concept of, like, what a Puerto Rican person looks like. So, and so, I was doing my ancestry recently because my sister fucking made me. And I was looking at my, gra- my grandfather, who's, like, a dark skin Spanish man. And that's why we don't really communicate with our Spanish side that much because, you know, he went and married a, a dark-skinned black woman and then they didn't really accept that because he already dark-skinned. I'm like, damn, nigga, you want to get a black girl? He's like, yeah, he, don't, he just loved who he loved. He don't really care. He didn't care right. that she was a dark-skinned woman or whatever. But some people petty like that and then that ended up resolving into, like, him not talking to his family no more because that's how deep the fucking colorism is out there. They want you to get lighter and not brighter. And, like, it shouldn't matter. Like, I don't look at nobody like they're better or worse whether they light-skinned or dark-skinned. So I don't want to be looked at like I'm better or worse whether I'm light skinned or dark skinned. But, but some grandparents are like that in Jamaica. Yeah. When like you are dating a certain kind of guy, they'll be like, "Oh, but you want to be able to come out with nice ears. So why mm-hmm. do you even want to talk to?" Right? They look mm-hmm. at those things. I just don't. I'm telling you, that's how it is all over. One of my best friends, she's from Panama, which is another Spanish speaking country. Like, see, always watching Cuba, everybody's dark skin over there. Mm-hmm. In Panama, they come in all different colors too, like every fucking country. But anyway. Her, her parents, she was the darkest one, and they put, they try to bleach her, like, literally. I guess they was fucking too dumb and ignorant to know, like, it's not real bleach, bitch. They would put her in a tub with bleach and scrub her, like, mad hard, like, thinking I was going to make her lighter. What? She told me, like, she told me this in confidence, so I'm not going to say who she is or whatever. She was one of my best friends growing up. And it just, that really hurt me a lot. I was like, damn, like, and it hurt her. Like, she would, she'll cry. Like, this is how I grew up. I never valued my skin or whatever because cause of how she grew up. And she's not, her, parents, her family wasn't even that light. I'm like, y'all niggas ain't even that light to be. You bleach your damn self if you so, want to be so close to white. Why are you bleaching this little girl? She's a little girl. But that's sad. Not for nothing. I feel like it's it starts in the home. Right. It normally does. Because, I mean, with me personally, my mom is really light-skinned. And my sisters and brothers, they're all light. I feel like I'm the darkest one. But I never experienced she treating them different from right. me i never experienced that but most homes people you know experience that where they're the black sheep of the house right. or you know they get treated like the stepchild but not for nothing there's this one guy i dated one time and he was always obsessed with girls that what do you call them exotic looking mm. like he always had he would always make some type of oh yeah she looks so bad she mad exotic or whatever and i'm like i just started to question myself even certain girls like when certain lighter skinned girls he would say oh my gosh she's so pretty whatever whatever and i used to question myself like i mean like i don't understand but i should have realized that he he was just an asshole right 
Yeah, and I'm not saying you can't problem. like who you like, but like stop praising people. First of all, exactly, especially if bro. I'm your girl, right? Why would you be oh, saying? Oh, and this was your boyfriend I killed. Yeah, right, right. Like he would say, it, but try to not make it be obvious. But I would pick up on certain right. little shit that he would say, job, and I'm like, like you gonna pick it? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why? Why do you keep on praising these women? Like people look how they look, and that's it. Like. And also, but that doesn't that bitch, you with me, so shut the fuck up. I don't exactly. Hear it. So then I used to question myself, like, damn. I mean, maybe I'm not pretty enough, or maybe That's I don't look a certain. It you, it really made me question myself, and it kind of brought down my self esteem. Like I never felt like I was attracted enough, or I was pretty enough. Like it really kind of messed with my self esteem. But just like you are. Right. Niggas be and it's so, but Attention. now that I'm looking back at it, I'm like, I should have never let what he said got to me in that sense. You can imagine if I was so low in right. self esteem that I went and did some extra shit to myself just right, to right. make him feel differently or look at me different. But I, I feel like I'll always remember him saying that to me because it really made me question myself. Like, I started to feel like, you know, I wasn't pretty enough or something was wrong with me. Meanwhile, other people, oh, you're so beautiful or whatever. But it's like who you want to hear that from is not really telling you that. They're telling you, oh, this other girl looks such and such. So it really made me question myself. But looking back, I'm like, he's an asshole. I, I should have like never color. allowed him to get to me like that. They should not be put, don't put us up against each other because what's beautiful about me might not be what's beautiful about her, what's beautiful about her might not be what's beautiful about me. Second, I don't care about looks alone, that shit is just one thing. It could be a real, he was very person. shallow, exactly. Look at yeah. you, disgusting. And on top of that, it's like every I think that I could look at a I could see beauty in everybody, every color. I don't see no reason why they gotta constantly put us up against. It was just him because I've never, nobody else ever made me feel like I wasn't pretty enough or anything. It was just him. And I don't know what was his fixation with girls that look exotic. And I, I blame, that's why I blame society because even though you feel like, um, I feel like who, TV raises us. Like we watch TV, we watch videos. Mm -hmm. like, this is who like they epitomize as like the. And that was Instagram. And God was saying that on, to, to me in my last podcast. He was like, yeah, when I was growing up. Everything I see was all light skinned girls, white girls. So I thought I need a light skinned girl and a white girl. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, he's getting conditioned by society to, to, to think this way. Because we, that's why I, it's nobody's fault. It's not light skinned people's fault. Like, you didn't ask to be born light skinned. You just fucking born how you born. Right. But, like, who, what the media puts out is a reflection of you. Like, you know, you want, I want to see, like, more variety. That's all I'm saying. Like, I like, that's why when we talk about, like, all oh, like, oh, these other people, I want to see more different flavors. Like, I don't want to see two dark ass people and you see like a little light skin. Like, cut it out, my nigga. Like, let's come on. Like, and be inclusive. So I want to see all different, so that people can know that there's beauty in everything. Like, I feel like they brainwashing us by only showing us these things. Them same niggas, I don't blame them for only liking one thing because that's all you really see, and that's what they make you feel like it's hot. Nah, but my thing is, most as I said, most of these men, it's not even about what they watch. They grew up around black. black girls and whatever so it's like all of a sudden i don't know if it's instagram or whatever but it's like people online they have this perfection of right. everything their looks their everything about them right, is right. perfect and we only show up most this time. men like they lust off of that and it's that. just not practical for those people don't even look like that right. in real life so it's like they try to compare their woman to that and as i said it was just him who ever made me feel like that and i would never date somebody like that ever again that ever made me question myself right. or you know because you're your you mad is not supposed to ever exactly. make you feel less than a woman or less than beautiful or whatever you know what i mean right. but you live and you learn and as i said i would never date somebody like that again but it was like no like, even, yeah. like, look at our hair. Let's bring it back to here. This is hair stories. We have, like, a Z pattern, all right? Black girls, you have a Z pattern. I do things to my hair to make it look like a more coily pattern because something I feel like it's flattering. But I'm proud of my little nappy ass Z right. pattern hair. Like, I'm proud of that. And, like, 
that's why I love seeing that now, like more people, more products, more exposure for like just and embracing it, lifting it up. Like I think it makes a difference. I really do. But I I love even that hairstyle that Rihanna had in the show. What is it called? Bye -bye. Bye -bye. I like that hairstyle. Like it's right. it's just it real basic. It look yeah, it's it's so natural and simple and I just I loved everything about it. I'ma definitely try that stuff. I need to get that hairstyle. But I love natural curly hairstyle. I don't like when it looks too perfect or too like mm -hmm. you know? Right. I like when it kinda have an A little boho effect. That's what we mean. Right. Now. Yeah. But I, I like that you open up with me, and I appreciate you sharing. Some of that stuff is deep, man. Some of that stuff is deep, but I'm sure every girl felt like that at one point or another. Yeah. Some dickhead in your life was trying to make you feel... Well, not even... Probably wasn't even trying. It's so stupid, he don't realize what he's doing. That's he true, because maybe he... I don't feel like he intentionally right. was doing it. Like, we, it was just be regular conversation. And, you know, women... We, anybody would pick up on certain little details of what you're saying. But... I don't care, because as I said, they all want our culture so bad. Oh, please, they stay. Even when Kim did the braids, everybody was right. talking about the Kim braids. Like, Boxer what? Braids and they would do it. Why How? Why do you up a lot, too, when they want to get, like, when they got festivals? Like, hey, I have a festival. Can you go do that? Oh, sorry. Sorry, back again. I can't do it. But, um, just because, like, I, I don't know. I'm like... It's just, this is for the culture. <laughs> That's what I can tell you, baby. This dude's for the culture. But, um, how does that affect how you look at guys now? What are you looking for in a man these days? Um, I feel like nowadays, I'm just look, looking for more of, it's beyond looks for me at this point. Like, what does he have to offer? Does he even have, because most of, mind you, let me go back to this guy. He had such self hate. I feel like he was just obviously right, right. So it'd be people who have their own unresolved issues, issues mm -hmm. that project this onto you. But nowadays, I'm looking for somebody who I don't know. Sometimes these men have mental issues and That's... they need real help. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to help nobody no more because I'll be like, oh. Most of us females, <laughs> we know this guy's problem, and we know he has all resolved issues. But we love the challenge, boy. Right. Oh, we gonna be the one to change him, to save him. <sighs> no, I'm not being. What, what are some red flags that like now you're like, no, nope. back in the day you might let it pass. Um, if he had a girl, really, would it let that slide before? Yeah, like I would be like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I would be with the shit. trying to think of something else that I would list like if you know pretty much you know his history like you know he yeah, treated girl a certain kind of way but you feel like you're that special one so you'd be like okay he might want to treat me like this or mm -hmm. no, nowadays no now, now I'm just looking for somebody that's decent that you know has a goal has a purpose they are driven I don't want somebody that all they do is complain about their nine to five go mm. home and play video games and do the same thing every day they don't want to do nothing different all they do i'm not i'm not knocking nobody's you need a man hobby. with a plan facts that's 